the VIC cipher or the VIC cipher. It was a pencil and paper cipher which means it could be easily used in the field by simply using a pencil and a piece of paper. It was used by a Soviet spy by the name of Rhino Hyhenen. He was assigned with the code name Victor. If the cipher is to be given a name that corresponds to today's standards, it would be named as a straddling bipartite monoalphabetic substitution superenciphered by modified double transposition, which quite frankly is almost longer than a giraffe's neck. By the time it came to be known, it was one of the most complicated ciphers that could be operated by hand, ever to become into existence. Although not as complicated or innate as modern ciphers, it stood against all attempts at cryptanalysis done by the CIA and the NSA at the time of its discovery back in 1953. This cipher descended from the Nihilist cipher family as the pinnacle. Until its discovery, it was thought that a double transposition was the most complicated cipher that could be used as a field cipher by an agent. This cipher was used in World War II by several Soviet spy rings, who communicated with Moscow using two versions of the cipher. A straddling checkerboard would be used instead of a polybius square which had the advantage over the other ciphers used by compressing plain text, raising unicity distance, allowing in turn transmissions to be completed in a faster manner by radio operators, helping them shut down and quickly go off the grid. Diving into the mechanics of how the cipher works, the secret key for the encryption can be derived by using a short phrase like the first line of a novel or a song, a date in a six digit format, and a personal number of your choosing which is unique to an agent. And it can be a one or two digit number. You then use the key phrase from a novel or song, date and personal number to create a 50 digit block of pseudo random numbers. Use this block to then create the message keys for a straddling checkerboard and a columnar transposition. Use the straddling checkerboard to encrypt the plain text and then apply two transpositions to the resultant ciphertext through a standard and diagonal columnar transposition. Finally, insert the key into the ciphertext. Let's take a look at an example. This example was published in the CIA archives. This is the example. As you can see, the personal number chosen is 6. The date is the 13th of September 1959 which is truncated down into six digits as 139195, as you can see in line B. The phrase is, "'Twas the night before Christmas, which is from a visit from St. Nicholas, poem. The key chosen is 72401. In line A, the key is written down. Line B is the date truncated down again into five digits. Line C is a subtraction of the first two lines. Line D is the phrase truncated into 20 characters. Line E is just sequencing of the phrase. The way of how the sequencing works is by ordering the elements from 1 to 10, where 0 represents 10. 
In case of equal values, the leftmost value is sequenced first. For example, the word octopus is sequenced as 2163475. C is 1 because sequencing is done alphabetically. The first O is 2, while the second O is 3, where we sequence them from the left. Same process goes with numbers. Line F is line C plus chain addition. Adding numbers from 1 to 0 is an aid for encoding when creating line H. Line G is the addition of line E to line F. Line H is the encoding of line G with the second part of line E and with the help of the aid that was added earlier in line F. Line I does not exist because I might be mixed up with the number 1. Line J is the sequencing of line H. And lines K, L, M, N and P is the chain addition of line H for 50 digits. Line O doesn't exist because O can also be mixed up with the number 0. Noting the last two non-equal digits, which come down to being 7 and 0, you add them to the personal number, 6, giving you the resultant of 13 and 6, which means the permutation keys are 13 and 6 digits long. Line Q is obtained by using a standard columnar transposition on the first 13 digits, whereas line R is obtained by using a diagonal transposition Line S is just the sequencing of line P. Putting all this into use, a message like attack at dawn, by dawn I mean 0500, not 915 like you did the last time, can be encrypted to become that group of numbers shown. Finally, to decrypt the cipher, you basically reverse the encryption process. The only thing you need to know to start the process is knowing the personal number of the agent. Then, you can work your way backwards to decrypt the ciphertext. I hope it wasn't a lot of information. It can be tricky to get the hang of it, but practicing it on a paper can really help. Hopefully, you learned something new by watching this video. Thanks for watching.